Hi guys, this is Mike. In this Cinema 4D tutorial, I'm going to talk about the Attributes Manager. Now, I undocked the Attributes Manager just so you can see it a little bit, a little bit easier in this tutorial. But whenever you choose an object in your Objects Manager, you'll see the options that come up in your Attributes Manager. So if I click on this cube or this spline wrap, you can see that we have our different options that we can choose from. So I'm going to choose cube and you can see that we have a few tabs that we can click through and it's different depending on what object that you have within your viewport within Cinema 4D, whether it be a tag, a, a material. So if I double click in here and add a material, so we have different options that come up in our attributes manager depending on what tag or tool or object that we're using. So you, you that generally you have these tabs that come up within whatever object you have, in this case the cube. Now you can go through and look at each of the tabs or you can click, hold and drag by selecting all the uh, different uh, uh, tags, or excuse me, all the different tabs that you have within the manager. So again, all you have to do is click, hold, and drag, and select those tabs, and now all of those options will be available within the Attributes Manager. And so you have these different arrows that you, you can click on to give you more options. And now I'll twirl open those options for you to see. Now, up here in the right hand corner, you have a few different options. We have these arrows that if you look at, you can see that if we click back, we can go through our history and go back between the last attribute, the last object that we clicked on. So we can click forward or backwards, or we can go up to see our projects. And then we can click back, depending on um, where we are within this Attributes Manager, we can go forward, backward, and up one level. Now, if you right click on these arrows, it also gives you the whole list of history of the objects that you clicked on, and as well as going forward and upward. Now we also have a search. So if you want to type in a search, say for an example, you can type in size. And when you have lots of different options, um, you know, depending on what object that you have selected, it becomes a little bit overwhelming. So it's a, it's a pretty good function that we have this search within Cinema 4D. You can just type in size and it just, just highlights and just shows just those objects, uh, just what you um, you put it in your search field here. And if I del uh, delete those, we get everything back again. We can just close this. Now we also have this lock function. So when you click onto when we don't have something selected, you can see our attributes go away. A lot of times when you're working on something, it's nice to just keep this attributes already um, shown so you don't have to keep going back and forth between your whatever objects you're trying to choose from. So you can click on your cube and then you can just select this particular, uh, this icon, so it'll just lock it. So next time you deselect that object or you go to another one, it will always keep this one locked in place so you don't have to keep going back and forth. So it's a nice little option there as well. Now for an example, if you have something, say you have this cube and we have it locked, but you deselect it. Now you don't have this object selected but what you can do is double click on this cube icon and it will select that object for you. So you don't have to go over to this at, over to the objects manager to select that cube. So it's just another option that we have, which is really nice. So going forward, 
we have the ability to change the name of our object, whatever it is, we have our layer. Now we can add in a layer by, if we go to our cube, and in this particular case, we can right click, or excuse me, we can just click on this icon here and we can go to add to new layer. Now, if I just pull this over to the side a little bit, you can see that we have this layer, we have the orange layer selected, and it comes up within this layer in our object tab when we go into, say, basic properties. So we have our layers manager here, and layers manager is really nice. Um, I don't wanna go into too much because I, I wanna focus on the attributes manager, but what you can then do is choose a few of these options here to say hide that particular object or lock it or we have a few other options here as well. So let me pull this back over. So we have this layer and we can go to our various functions here if we click on this little arrow. And we always have this little circle arrow if we need to use a pick in order to select a certain object. So if we need to do that, we can click on an object and then say, click on an, uh, depending on what you're choosing, this isn't a particular good example, but I'll show you another example when we go to the spline wrap. And then you have a few different options. You'll see these, these little circles that come up within your attributes manager. So if you're going to animate something within Cinema 4D, you would command click on one of these options in order to give you a, a, key, a, a key icon within your, your timeline. So that's what these circles are for. Now say for an example you have, um, we'll go down to size, so this might be a little bit easier to see. So I'm gonna close these just for time being. And you can see that we have size where we can choose a value. So if I select in the X, I can add in 400 and that will give us our option for our size in the X. But we also have these little up and down arrows that give us the ability to just move upwards in the, uh, in the size, but, and we can also go down. Now, in this particular case, we can also choose our option key, modifier key, while clicking on one of these arrows, and it gives us an even smaller increment in which to choose from. Now, if I right click on these arrows, it's going to snap back to its default setting, its default value. So if I bring this up, I right click, and it just brings us right back again. And we can do that for any of our options that we have here. So there's some really nice options within the Attributes Manager, but let's take a look at another, another object that we have. I have this spline wrap. Now I was talking about how you have this little circle here, and you can go to various other objects that have the same layer, and then click on that, and then click onto your cube and it puts it right into that layer. So you can see now if I turn off the visibility, it will also turn off the visibility of my, my spline wrap, which is really nice. Or whatever object you're using. It, it doesn't have to be a, a deformer. It could be just another, it, it could be a just also another just object. Say if I bring in this cone, I can do the same thing with this particular uh, cone. So if I click on this little uh, arrow here with the circle, and then I select my cube, it will also put that within the, in, in that layer. So if I hide that layer, you can see that a little bit more visible, a uh, little bit more visual in the viewport to see, and let me pull this down, so you can see it hides both those objects. So these are really important tips as you're navigating through and using 
the Cinema 4D, it's good to know what a lot of these things are. And so I just want to kind of go over a few of these options that we have. So if I'm in this cube, we have our basic, we have visible in editor, we have that to default, but we can also turn that off as well. And we also have, so it's the same function as these little stoplights. So we have also render, we can have that off and you can see how that updates within our, our timeline here, or excuse me, in our attributes manager. So one of the things that you would say, hey, that's kind of redundant, why is that even there? But you can see these little dots that I told you about for animation. You can also use those to animate that on and off, depending on what you're trying to do. In this case, maybe in this case, we would have it in the render. So it would turn off at a certain point. So it's just an option that you have. You also have various colors that you can choose. So in this particular case, we have this cube selected and we go to our display color. Now, mind you, this is just the display, not within your render. So you can choose a different color. Oops, excuse me. You can choose a different color, so it will display differently. This is pr particularly important when you have lots of objects. You just need to highlight a certain display color, and that will help out as well. And you can see we have this little arrow here. We can click on that. And it gives us some more um, some more options if we want to use a different type of color system, RGB, Kelvin, uh, hexadecimal. So we have a few different options here with color wheel and our color picker. So we have a few different options as well, just for our display. And we have it enabled. We can also un uh, uncheck that for to disable it. And we also have X-ray, which is kind of important if you have an object within an object. So there are situations where you might have objects that are hidden within an object and x-ray kind of comes in handy. At, you know, there's all kinds of different reasons. Say if you have a helmet and you have a character, you want to hide that helmet to see the, the head of your character, just for an example, but there's plenty of um, reasons why you would turn off the x-ray to see what else is in that object. And we have our coordinate system and uh, I basically told you a lot about the the same situation that we have with our Fong or whatever tag, excuse me, that you would be using within Cinema 4D. You can also do that within the attributes manager. So the same things would be um, would be the same thing as I talked about before. You can click and drag and you can see more options within that tag or if it's a material as well.